Michael Schumacher is one of the greatest drivers to ever walk the planet Earth. With 7 world titles and 11 million wins, Schumacher's legacy in the sport is such that even those unfamiliar with motorsport know exactly who he is. We're all familiar with his years in Ferrari, at Benetton, and even in his debut at Jordan. His debut in the Belgian Grand Prix sticks in the mind of a lot of Formula 1 fans. That spectacularly beautiful car, coupled with a staggering performance straight out of the box, made him an instant hit with the fans. However, the story of how this all came about is because of a fight between a London cab driver and an angry Frenchman. Let's set the stage. The year is 1991. Ayrton Senna is leading the world championship, Nigel Mansell's moustache is just as glorious as ever, and Jordan are on the grid for the first time, run by the eccentric Eddie Jordan. The team looked in good steed for their maiden hit out, with major backing from 7UP, a beautifully fast car with the Gary Anderson Design 191, and a driver lineup which was, uh, interesting to put it politely. In one car there was Andrea de Cesaris, a man known for crashing before he even got in the car, and in the other seat was Bertrand Gachot. Born in Luxembourg, Gachot was a French racing driver who competed under a Belgian license. To confuse you even more, Gachot identified himself merely as European, and this is something highlighted throughout his entire career. Bro, pick a damn flag, will ya? He had attempted to qualify for 30 Grand Prix before joining Jordan, although in 25 of those attempts, he would not qualify, and in 16 of those attempts, he wouldn't even pre-qualify. Having said that, those cars did kind of drive like Bantu Halamisa spoke. You give a poor man a fish and you feed him for a day. You teach him to, f to fish, you give him, you give him an... Uh, no, no. These teams included the likes of the Yonex Racing Team, which was being funded by Jean-Pierre von Rossum, Belgian stock market guru, and evil Gandalf. Gachot was nonetheless held to a high regard, and coupled with his uncanny ability to get gullible rich folk to sign some checks, he found a spot on the Jordan Grand Prix team for the 1991 season. Aside from some poor reliability at the start, the 191 proved to be quite a decent car, and Gachot began scoring points on a consistent basis. In between these races, Gachot also won the 24-hour of Le Mans with Volker Wiedler and Johnny Herbert, driving that amazing Mazda 787B, you know, that, that, that one that makes your ears bleed. At the Hungarian Grand Prix, he would post the fastest lap of the race, and heading into the Belgian Grand Prix, Gachot was expecting the 191 to fly. However, before this event, Gachot was required to attend a trial at the Southwark Crown Court over an incident that happened just eight months prior. London, December 10th, 1990. Rushing to attend a meet between Jordan and the hierarchy at 7UP, Gachot became involved in an incident between himself and a London cab driver. This was at Hyde Park Corner, you know, that one in... In, in London. Although neither car incurred damage, Gachot and the cab driver had a row. The cab driver allegedly pulled him by the tie and was ready to throw a punch. Seeking to defend himself, Gachot sprayed him with CS gas as a measure of self-defense. Although knowing that this was illegal, Gachot hit the canister in a toilet. Bruh. Although this didn't really work because shortly thereafter, he was arrested. So, fast forward to the date of the trial, Gasho was expecting a fine or most likely a suspended sentence, given that this was an act of self-defense. However, they didn't quite see it this way, and instead of this fine, he would be sentenced to 18 months in prison. He would only serve two months of the sentence, but remember, this all happened one week before the Belgian Grand Prix. Naturally, Eddie Jordan needed to find a replacement for this round. Jordan was keen to sign up experienced campaigner Stefan Johansson. However, the Swede wanted a check for his efforts. Not content with paying a driver, Jordan instead looked toward drivers who could bring in money to the team. This being the early 1990s, there was no shortage of pay drivers. It's just that back then, some of them were really really bad. Nevertheless, the chiefs of Mercedes-Benz came knocking and were willing to submit a gracious offer of $150,000 to have 22-year-old Michael Schumacher make his Formula 1 debut at the spa Francorchamps circuit. The six-figure injection of money was an orgasmic occasion for Jordan, and so Schumacher was declared the second driver for Jordan for the Belgian Grand Prix. While bargaining his way onto the grid, manager Willy Weber said that Schumacher had driven around the circuit around about 100 times. There was only one issue about that. That was a complete lie. So to get his eye in, Andrea de Cesaris was asked to take Schumacher around the track as a sort of 
tour guide. However, perhaps fearful he may end up in another crash, the Cesaris instead elected to simply explain the gearing through the corners to Schumacher. Not content with theory, Schumacher elected for a more practical approach, utilising a fold-out bicycle and went for a few laps around the circuit. Imagine pedalling up this bitch. After only one test day at Silverstone preceding the event, and after having spent the evenings in a youth hostel, Schumacher took to the track and the rest, as is so often said, was history. The Cesaris qualified in 11th place, which was respectable for sure, although Schumacher would put his 191 on the 4th row of the grid in 7th place. After his stellar weekend in Belgium, Schumacher was hot property at the time, and so inked a deal to race with Benetton for the remainder of the season. The remarkable thing about this was that he had actually finalised the deal just hours before the Italian Grand Prix practice sessions. He would then proceed to beat teammate and world champion Nelson Piquet in both qualifying and the race. This left Eddie Jordan just that little bit pissed off that he had to settle for future Andrea Motor driver, Roberto Moreno. Over the years, Schumacher would go on to achieve some of the greatest feats in the sport's history, and remains one of the greatest drivers to ever grace the sport. But what about the man he replaced, Bertrand Gasho? Well, after being released from prison, he asked Eddie Jordan for a seat back. Jordan told Gasho to go away, and allowed Alex Zanardi to complete the season for them. Gasho would live out the remainder of his Formula 1 career in cars that either didn't qualify or couldn't be bothered to finish. Who knows what would have happened had he not gotten involved in a dust-up between himself and a London cab driver. Thank you guys for watching, please consider liking this video and subscribing for future content. And always remember, keep it respectful, be wholesome, don't be a manus, and as always, I'll see you all later.